Hello, today we are doing Chapter 3, Section 7 in Algebra 1. Our essential question is, how do we, how do the values of A, H, and K affect the graph of the absolute value function g of x equals A times x minus H plus K? All right, so you probably want to hit pause and get some of this information down. An absolute function, absolute value function is a function that contains an absolute value expression. Those are those two lines, those two vertical lines. The parent function is kind of given to your right right there. It is a V shape. Um, it's symmetric, which means that if I folded it on that Y axis, um, it's going to lie on top of each other. The vertex, or kind of changes directions, is at 0, 0. And if you notice, over here you've got a slope of 1. On the left-hand side, your slope is negative 1. You can put any number in, so your domain is all real numbers. However, you're only going to get positive numbers out, so your range is y is greater than or equal to 0. That is all information that you'll definitely need to know. And what can happen is we can take that absolute value and we can function and we can do some things to it. We can add numbers, multiply numbers, subtract numbers. So we're going to see how that affects it. So here I'm adding 3 after, the absolute, after I take the absolute value sign. Let's see how that affects our graph. I'm going to make a table of values. Remember, when you make a table, you're the one who chooses your x values. So I would choose some negatives, 0, and some positive. These are your outputs or your y values. You graph it. We have our parent function um, in black. So it looks like that was transformed three units upward. So my domain is always going to be all real numbers. But now my range is y is greater than or equal to 3 because my lowest y value is 3 and everything is happening above that. Let's try another one. What I notice right away on this one is that minus 2 is inside with the x inside those absolute values. So let's see how that affects our graph. I'm going to do the same thing, make a table. We're going to plot those ordered pairs. And if you wanted to, you could have um, extended that out a little bit because it kind of got truncated a little. Well, our vertex went from 0, 0 to 2, 0. So it looks like it shifted it two units to the right. Your domain is still all real numbers, because I can put negative, I can put positive, I can put zero in there. And your range is y is greater than or equal to zero, because my lowest value is still zero for y. All right, take a second, graph these, hit pause when you think you have the graph, hit play, and check your answers. So on number one, it looks like it shifted down one. On number two, it shifted to the left four. Are you starting to see any bits of pattern? If it's outside that absolute value, I'm thinking that it's shifting it up or down. If it's inside that absolute value, it's shifting it right or left. Let's see how that affects it if I'm multiplying a number on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead, make a table. Let's make that a little bit bigger first. So, yeah, that's much easier to see. Make a table. 
plot that. All right, again, I have my parent graph in black. That's always kind of nice to put that down. Um, you want to kind of make a really strong mental image of that parent function in your head so that you can reproduce it really quickly. I just always remember slope of 1, slope of negative 1. So you might want to ask yourself, well, how did that affect it? Well, it looks narrower. Looks like it's been vertically stretched. So, and also it looks like my slope is 2 and negative 2. Up 2, right 1. Up 2, left 1. The domain and the range hasn't changed. So if I were going to make a connection there, I'm thinking that that 2 causes it to vertically stretch. It becomes skinnier. Think of a rubber band or a piece of rubber. If I were to pull on it vertically, it's going to get taller and skinnier. All right. For part B, we have a negative 1 half in front of that x. So there's two things. We have a fraction and we have a negative sign. Let's see how that affects it. So we're going to make a table. Plug those values in, get an output. So here's our parent function. I plot it. Well, that negative sign flips it over the x-axis. And because that 1 half is less than 1, it's um, shrinking the graph by a reflection by a factor of one half. Okay. The slope is also negative one half, positive one half. All right. Try these two on your own when you think you have the answer. Hit play and check yourself. Yep, that's going to be um, a slope of 3, negative 3, and positive 3. It's going to be a reflection, so it's been stretched by a factor of 3. This one is a vertical shrink. I pushed down on it, and also my slope is up 1, right 4, so my slope is 1 fourth. All right, so to kind of sum it up, sometimes we're going to have a couple things going on. This is vertex form. A times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. The vertex is h, k. Look at that. There's a minus sign in front of that h, but my vertex is not negative h. When it's paired with uh, x inside a grouping symbol, like an absolute value, you're going to take that abs you're going to take um the opposite, okay? And it's always going to be symmetric about the line x equals h. And hopefully you remember that if you've got x equals a number, it's a vertical line. So that k, if it's plus k, you're shifting it up. If it's a minus k, you're shifting it down. If there's a minus sign right here, you're going to the right. If there's a plus sign right there, you're going to the left. So let's take a second and do these two problems, and we're going to compare it to, I'm sorry, there's only one problem. We're going to compare the graph of G to the graph of F. So there's two things going on. The graph of X is X plus 2 minus 3, and the graph of G is the absolute value of 2X plus 2 minus 3. So we're going to make a table of each function. And I'm not spending a lot of time making tables. I'm going to go with the assumption that, that that's something you guys can handle on your own if you need to come into Math Lab or IPASS. Then we're going to plot these. Um, I like how they've used different colors to plot them. The blue is your F function. The red is your G function. So if I wanted to uh, compare them, 
it looks like the G function is narrower. The F function is a little bit wider. The vertex here is at negative 1, negative 3. Here it's at negative 2, negative 3. So it's got a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half. And we haven't really talked about horizontal shrink, but horizontal shrink is always going to be the opposite because it, of what you think because it's in a grouping symbol. Here, you're going from x to 2x. So you're going from just a plain x to adding or putting a 2 in front of that. The reciprocal of that 2 is 1 half. Uh, another way that you could look at it is see what happened to that slope. Okay. I think one thing that um, throws people off is sometimes you look at this as a vertical stretch instead of a horizontal shrink. And there are going to be multiple ways to look at this because if I were to think of this as a giant rubber band and pull it out horizontally, it is going to get it is going to change it vertically as well. The best way to remember this is it is paired up within a grouping symbol with the X. You are going to be looking at a horizontal um, change. So on this one, I can tell you right now on number five, we're going to be looking at a horizontal change because I have that one half. I went from nothing in front of that x to a one half. And that is a take the reciprocal of that. And that's going to be my horizontal stretch. So let's go ahead, hit pause, make a table, graph those, compare them. When you're ready, hit play, check your answer. Right. I'm going to highlight the original one. I'm not sure why they did not put this with a color. So we started off with x minus 1 in absolute values. I'm a visual person, so I always like to have the color. So that 1 half. stretched it out by a factor of 2. Here, on number 6, we went from nothing to that positive 4, or negative 4 in front of there. So the reciprocal is going to be 1 fourth. And I'm taking the reciprocal because it is in a grouping symbol of absolute values. My here was my original. It's moving the vertex and it's also making it wider. I'm sorry, it's making it narrower. I highlighted the wrong one. That way you can at least visualize the differences. All right, try this one on your own. Actually, let's do this one together. On this one, I know I'm going to have a couple things going on. It's going to be going to the right one because I've got that minus 1. And it's in a grouping bracket. So it's going to be the opposite of kind of what you think. Usually you see that minus and you're going to think left. What you're technically doing is you're solving for x, so it's going to the right one. And you're going to have a stretch by vertically by a factor of 2. And I know it's vertically because it's outside of the grouping symbols. And 
that negative sign means it's going to be a reflection. And that plus 3 means that I'm going up 3. So there is a lot going on on this graph. So method 1, I can make a table. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then just plot those points and go from there. My final answer is the one that is in red. Method two, and as you get better at this, this is going to actually be the quicker way. You get that vertex of 1, 3, and then you plot another point on the graph, such as 2, 1, because the graph is symmetric about the line x equals 1, because that's my x coordinate in my vertex. And then you plot a third point that's symmetrical and draw your V shape. All right, a lot going on on this graph or on this lesson. Um, I know this is a tough one. You might want to get on YouTube and look up other transformation videos. Uh, as always, though, you are welcome to come into Math Lab or iPass.